Um, I'll start out with uh, last week. <clears throat> First of all, it's good to see everybody again. Seems like we were just doing this, but um, start out with last week. We went over to Woodward and scrimmaged. Um, I was really, really pleased with our freshman and JV. Um, our freshman and JV absolutely got all over them. Um, Craig was there. I'm telling you, I mean, it was it was something to behold. To to really, it was the first time, honestly, since I've been here that I felt like. Uh, there was continuity, and the things that we were trying to teach our younger kids, you could see happening. Because um, you don't see that at practice. I mean, because you see your kids every day, you don't see what they compare like to everybody else. And so <clears throat> when they got out there, and we went on offense first with our freshmen and went right up the field and scored, I think, four plays and started on the ball in the 20. So um, that was, it was awesome. JV did the same thing, had two pick sixes on the JV. Um, varsity was a wash. Um, we start out on offense. We didn't move the ball in the scrimmage. They wanted to keep it where it was. Well, while we were on offense, they wanted to keep it where it was. And when they were on offense, they wanted to move it. But um, I think the second or third, well, first play it goes for 10. Second play we go for 30 or 40. Uh, Austin Sklar uh, runs counter right off the, out of double tie. I mean, and, and if you guys have seen uh, you remember what we did last year, and you kind of remember the years previous. They had good offenses here when Ty was quarterback and in Hess, and those kids were playing, but they weren't necessarily ever physical up front and just a running, running the ball. I mean, it's saying, "Hey, we can, we can run the ball. This is what we do." And I've, that's again one of the firsts for us because I felt like we could line up and say, "This is what we're going to do," and we did it. And that, that, that was a great feeling. <clears throat> Our offensive line looks great. We, we made some big changes up front. Took Ethan Harsman down. Ethan's weighing 230, 235. I mean, he's just rock solid, looks good. Um, I think I'm going to lose that battle with him. Uh, I moved him to tackle because he's honestly he's going to be an amazing high school tackle for us, as athletic and strong as he is. But we also moved him to D end defensively. Uh, because of what he can do to the line of scrimmage. But he snuck in about five snaps the other day at Mike, uh, linebacker at Woodward, and was stroking people. So I, I'm probably going to lose that battle, um, you know, in the long run. But uh, we'll, we'll get what we need out of him up front. But uh, we moved him to left tackle, Chase Jones, who's our other linebacker, to right tackle. Um, our right guard is Trevor Allison, 6'3", 275. Our center is Max Parsons. 6'1", 260. Our left guard is going to be a freshman. We're going to start a freshman at left guard who's six foot 270 and can move. So um, that's, that's Coach Claflin's son, Kellen Claflin, the one that we hired last year from Kansas. His son is an eighth grader. If you, if you ever saw him walking around, I mean, he's a big kid, and he's an athletic kid. Um, Austin Ferguson, he'll be in that mix everywhere up front. He'll, he plays every position. He, he started out at center, so now we've kind of moved him around. And he's ever been a 6'2", 270. Um, so we're, we're not going to lack in size as the years go on. <laughs> um, but we are, we're extremely athletic out on the edges, which for what we like to do, you know, run inside zone and uh, get those guys back up, you know, move up on backers and get downfield runs. We, we have the ability to run some screen game now with those guys that maybe we didn't have before because they can run in space. Um, that's exciting. Um, made a big change at tailback, moved Austin Sklar to tailback, Mitchell Meyer to quarterback, Hayden Caldwell out to receiver. Um, Hayden, for those of you that remember watching him, he is extremely fast. Um, but he prefers a game where he can catch the ball in space. And so with our personnel now, with Mitchell being a year older and being settled in the offense, Austin's strength was running the football. He was a great running quarterback. And so we found out against Luther last year in the playoffs uh, when he was running scout team running back for us that somebody should have had him at running back all season because he was tearing us up. And so I said then, I've got this still figured out. So um, Hayden, he is the, the great thing about him is he's fast enough he's going to require a safety on his side of the field. If you don't, we're going over the top, and he's, he can do it. He made the finals in the 100 last year in state track meet. I mean, he's that type of kid. And he's just going to get better and better as the season goes on. 
So that really opens the door whenever you can dictate somebody to play somebody over top with a corner. You really open the door to being able to attack the running game to that side of the field. For us, this is what we want to do. Um, and so, you know, recapping Woodward, like I said, it was exciting. Um, we went over there. It was a lot of energy. started raining and storming while we were over there. Kids were jumping around, fired up. Um, it was awesome. Honestly, I wish we were playing them. I know that sounds crazy. They're a 5A school now again. Or 2A, but I wish, I wish we had them on schedule. It would be a fun game. But <clears throat> we open up with Blackwell. Blackwell has almost 80 kids on their roster. They're going to bring over 80 kids um, Friday night. Um, they're a Tony Franklin system team, which means they're going to throw it 50 times. Um, so, yeah, Ron, I'm sorry. It's going to be a late one, buddy. Um, unless we can keep the ball away from him, then it won't be too much. But um, <clears throat> quarterback's not a bad player. They do have one good receiver. Um, they're a little light up front, but they're good at what they do. There's a reason why they're throwing it 50 times a game, because they can't line up and run it to save their life. So, <laughs> Coach Walter said it sounded familiar. I don't know. Uh, he, uh, <clears throat> that's why they're doing what they do, and it's, it's really nerve-wracking, to be honest with you, because, number one, this is a week zero game, so we have one less week to prepare than we normally do for a game. So do they. I understand that. But uh, it's tough to go into week one and see something you haven't seen in summer and spring. And we haven't played a team that's going to throw it around like they do. So it's going to take us a quarter to get acclimated to it. Um, we had a really good day of practice yesterday in preparation. Probably our best Monday we've had since I've been here. So that was good. Um, you know, other than that, kind of as an overview, anybody got any questions? Did anybody get hurt in the scramble? In the, in the scrimmage? The scrimmage. The scrimmage. The scrimmage. <laughs> the scrimmage later tonight. Yeah. <laughs> there might be somebody. There might be. I was going to say, there could be somebody later tonight. Um, no, we came out healthy. Um, knock on wood. Um, we've been healthy. Austin Scar's a little banged up, has a little swelling. That was just from a contact hit. It wasn't a, you know, any torn ligament or pulled muscle or anything like that. It'll be all right. It's just football. I mean, um, and he'll tell you, I mean, same once, once the live contact starts, so I told the kids, too, before we went over to Woodward, I said, listen, um, you're not going to feel this good again until December. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I mean, that's, we, you're, you're not going to feel like this again until about Christmas, hopefully. So, you know, if it's, a, if it's an injury or are you hurt, you know, we, we go over that because everybody's going to have little, little Dings dinged up here and there, but uh, we got out of it healthy, and that was we didn't go very many reps. Only went about 20 reps with the ones, and I did that for a reason because I wanted to get out of there healthy, and and get everybody on the field week one. Um, home opener. I mean, it's gonna be big big game for us because we we feel like we have a little momentum. We didn't feel like we lost a whole lot with that playoff loss last year, I and mean, we won our last two on the road before then, and so kids are excited. Um, our numbers are down a little bit, about 40, uh, 45 kids from about 52 last year. But we only have seven seniors. So we're going to be back up over 50 again next year. Totally moved into your new building? So. No, no. No, we are not moved into the new facility. Um, we're, we're able to use the weight room. The uh, indoor facility, which Coach Walter and I talk about, about daily, uh, trying to get into, it's finished. It's a matter of legalities and insurance at this point, um, and that's what school lawyers doing with the other lawyer, and they're they're getting that hashed out. But they don't seem lawyers don't seem to the, the guys that are working on it. Excuse me, I'm not lawyers in general. <laughs> Jesse's over here going. No, no, they don't seem to understand quite the importance of like Coach Walter on the phone last night. Hey, it's supposed to rain for the next five days. Uh, can we get in there and practice? You know, so. Um, but it's coming. We're not all the way moved in. Um, about 80% done is what the architect came in the other day and walk, made a walkthrough. So 80% done on, on the, the building that um, was donated money towards. The indoor side is done, the 100 by 100. They just have about 20% left to finish up on the inside. Um, bathroom fixtures, tie, uh, tile. You moving your locker room down there? Moving the locker room down there, yep. My locker room will be down there, coaches' offices, weight room. Film room, training room, all that'll be in there. Um, had some really amazing people step up and donate towards that. 
So when it's all done, we will definitely have a, uh, an open house. Everybody come up and see, walk through, and, and uh, say thank you to those people that, that put that money in. It's unbelievable. So, um, But, yeah, we're not quite in there yet, Bryce, but getting there. Getting there. Hopefully soon. Anybody else? Game, time, game times are all at seven this year. Seven. Every game's at seven. Um, Pawnee was our only holdout last year. Um, they were at seven thirty, but I think everybody agreed this year district wise to go at seven. So we did all of our. I brought these schedules. If you don't already have one, you want to take one and put it up inside the place of business or house or whatever. Take one with you. Um, but yeah, all seven o'clock. So I think we're going to get really lucky too. I, I was worried when I scheduled this game a year ago that, <clears throat> I mean, August 26th, 7, 7 o'clock, you'd be going, ooh, it's going to be a little hot. But we got lucky. I mean, it looks forecast can be in the 80s and might have a little rain, but I bring the rain on. I hope it pours. I hope they try to throw it 50 times. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, that's no fun for you guys, but I'm going to be ear to ear smiling down there if it starts raining half, right, right before the game. So, um, That's about it. Do you, think, do you have any effects last year when you practice on grass and then go play on the turf? Um, I definitely say it's to our advantage to get used to the turf because it is a little different. Um, but it's different in a better way. I mean, there's just something that when you're playing on a wet field that you get used to knowing that you can't cut, that you have to do things with your feet as a receiver or a, like whoever. And those, you know, you can still play for the most part, you know, unless it's not draining correctly or it's a torrential downpour. But, um, you know, Coach Walters and Northwestern have been awesome about any time they're not on it, you know, if we, hey, can we get on it and just do a walkthrough, do camp or 7-7. Seven, seven. Our kids have been on it enough to, to call it home, I think. And, uh, you know, with us having turf now in the indoor, it, it totally changes that as well, you know. Um, and those of you that wonder, I've already had this question, you know, are you going to go in there um, when it's raining? And the answer is yes, but first we'll go out on the field and do what we need to do. If we need to go down and get team in, in the rain, we're going to do it. Because the last time I checked, they don't move football indoors when it's raining. So we'll go down and practice and, and get what we need in. But the advantage to that indoor is now we can come up, get in there, and go through things that you can't necessarily ram home out there in the rain. Kids don't want to be out there. You're trying to do the best you can. Now you can be sharp. You can polish everything up. And and that's where the huge advantage comes in. Our reason is completely different. Because they shut us down. Right? Oh, that's true. They shut us down. So you can't practice. Well, <clears throat> NCAA. It's a lot here in, in August, right? August is rain season. So anytime it rains and there's lightning within 15 miles, they shut us down yeah. completely. So could not practice for a long time. Yep. The huge problem. NCAA, a little bit different story. I mean, I think ours is eight miles, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not standing out there holding that rod up. You know, I mean, if there's lightning, we go in. If it's not around, then we practice. So that is definitely a disadvantage for them. But, um, yeah, it's – it's uh, to answer your question, a lot of people ask about that turf when they come up here to play and try to find places to get on it before. I think it would be harder to go the opposite. I think it would be harder to go from turf all the time to go playing on grass. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Well, uh, things have certainly changed. Uh, I remember the first quarterback club two years ago, Coach Dollar stands up there and he goes, well, three things. We're young and inexperienced, we're small, and we're slow. <laughs> and none of that sounds very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, it was definitely, I, I got to witness that, so I knew exactly what you were talking about. Um, yeah, it's, things are different. Um, it's amazing, to the work that these kids have put in. I, I'm going to give up to these seniors. Um, they have really, really bought in. And um, that group last year, they were they did a good job doing what we asked them to do. But this group here of those seven kids, um, if you just see them walking around, we look like a football team. I mean, we do. We look we look like we belong. And that, that takes a lot of work. That summer pride deal is no joke. I mean, they we ask a lot of them. 
and uh, spring footballs, camps, seven on seven. I mean, it, it takes up a good part of what they do, and they sacrifice that to be good and represent you all and me and this community. And um, yeah, you gotta be proud of them for that because boy, they've made it a long way. So I'm telling you, from uh, from some of the beatings we took when I first came back here and witnessed what was going on um, to where we are now, to being able to maybe dish some out is uh, is pretty fun. It's it's really fun. Those kids have a, a lot to do with that. Yeah, there is some. Believe me, I got some circle. Hell, I got some circle from when I was playing. I promise you. <laughs> and I'll forget about that. So, anybody else? Hey, don't forget, come grab my schedules if you don't have one. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Good.